everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my office. I apologize for the lighting in here, it's not always great, but we're going to be working with our We Create Vision today and before we get started, be sure that you're subscribed here on YouTube, that way you don't miss out on any of the fun corrected content we have coming. Now in today's video, we're going to correct something that we had an issue with in our initial video, which was the cut not lining up with the engraving. In order to fix this, we just simply need to calibrate our camera. So I'm going to show you how to do that in a really comprehensive video that shows you all of the different steps. It's a pretty easy process, didn't take very long, and it made a huge difference. And I'll post a picture up so that you can see the difference that this made, but it really did make a big difference. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be working here with the We Create vision to calibrate our camera so the first thing that you want to do is make sure that your machine is turned off you can unplug it too but just as long as it's off you're good now i'm going to apologize now for our glare and you might hear some lawnmower sounds in the background our neighbor is mowing but what i want to do is i'm going to open up my top here my lid and you want to make sure that your lid opens past a 90 degree angle so mine's just back a little bit now, the next thing that we want to do is we're going to come in to our laser and right here, this beam, this is where your laser head sits. Take your hand and place it on the back of the beam and you just want to push that beam forward and then backward. And now what you want to do, and I think this was not explained very well where to find this, is you're going to find a little screw hole and it's right there. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that this little divot that's right there lines up with that little screw hole on both sides. So I line it up with one side and then what I did was I followed the beam over to the other side and checked the hole over here. So you can see this one, we have a little hole and then our little divot and they line up perfectly fine. Next thing you want to do too is you want to make sure that you have your grate placed in properly. You cannot do this with your rotary tool, so make sure your grate is in properly, meaning that you're going to have your screws at the top, so those little silver dots, and then you just make sure that everything is placed in there securely. Next thing we'll do is put a piece of wood. You want to make sure you're using a brand new blank piece of wood for this. I've got my brand new wood, so I'm gonna place this in, and you wanna make sure when you do the calibration that your wood is gonna sit into this bottom corner. So you just place your wood in and get it lined up, and then you line it so that it's right here into this bottom right corner, and that way it's gonna fully like sit into your uh, laser and it's going to kind of hit against the side here and then at the bottom so you won't be able to kind of move it up kind of be able to move it over and down now from here we're going to go into the software to do a few things and to change some settings and i'll show you how to do that and then we're going to go ahead and have our laser calibrate it is really important to have your laser on and connected. And once you do that, what you'll do is you're gonna go under settings, which is up here in the top menu. Now, if you don't have all of these settings, that's okay, just turn your laser off and back on. Um, mine did have to be turned off then back on to access all these settings and I'm not exactly sure why but that's okay no big deal so what you want to do is find where it says camera calibration which is right here kind of middle of the road i would say and it's right under transportation mode so what i want to do is i'm going to click camera calibration now this is going to give us a little warning and i'll read it to you this function is intended for situations where there is a significant camera deviation if the current visual position is relatively accurate within two millimeters deviation it's not recommended to initiate the camera calibration now if you watched my review video you saw how off it was so we definitely want to go ahead and calibrate our camera if the results are worse after camera calibration you can click the restore factory settings button to revert the calibration data so there is definitely an option in case something does go wrong but i'm not anticipating any issues now what we'll do from here is we're going to click start calibration and that will start our laser working to get the little crosshairs that it's going to put on each of our like parts of our board and i'll show you guys that 
So we'll go ahead and click start calibration. And now it does say before starting calibration, please prepare the basswood, which is what we did. We put the wood in and then just make sure it meets those requirements, which it does. Make sure it's completely flat and our thickness of our board is three millimeters. So we can just type that in here and make sure that that is correct. It is three millimeters. Now it says the flatness of the material significantly affects the accuracy of calibration. Please choose a clean and flat wooden board whenever possible, which we have done. The more accurate the measurement data of the wooden board thickness, the better the calibration will be. We're using wood that they sent to us, so we know exactly like what size it's supposed to be. Go ahead and click next step. Then it just tells us where to place the wood, which we already did. We want to align it with that bottom left corner, and then we're going to click start calibration. During the calibration, keep the lid closed at all times and do not place heavy objects on the machine. So I'm going to go ahead and click start and we can watch it go. Now what it's doing here is it is actually using its camera to look at the different layers. So it's going to look at the top line, the middle line, and the bottom line to check where it is reading those lines. Once it's read everything, the little complete option will come up. So you can just click complete and you should be good to go. Now, personally, I am going to go ahead and test this. So I want to get out of my settings and then I'm going to go ahead and open one of the files that didn't work. So we're going to open up that tic-tac-toe file again, which is super easy to do. So we're just going to go here to the tic-tac-toe. And for this one, I just want to cut a couple of the circles because those were rarely where we had a lot of our issue. So I'm going to delete um, the other like pieces. So I'm just going to get rid of like the bunch of the X's. I'm going to get one of the O's. Oops, not like that. I'm not. Um, if you accidentally do that, just hit undo. But I just want to grab one of these O's and just move it up here as well, because we're going to just test to see that this works and that my calibration is good. So I'm going to move these down. And then what I want to do is I want to click where it says auto focus, and that's going to make sure that it brings up our piece of wood again so that we can uh, go ahead and cut on it. We're just going to use that same piece that we already had in there. I don't really care if I waste a little corner of it just to make sure that our design is correct and cutting well. Now you'll see that our board is up. Like I said, I don't care if it cuts on top of one of the little crosshairs, totally fine. So what I'm going to do from here is I need to make sure to tell it what to do for each of my layers. So this layer I'm going to leave as a fill engrave and we're using basswood. But what I love about this is I'm able to select my like darkness. So I want to make it like kind of darkish, um, but enough that we can see. So we will use the 150 setting. I think that'll be fine. And then I want to make sure that this path here is set to cut. So I want to select it. And then I just want to make sure that this is set to cut and it should be fine on the setting that they have listed there. So I think we're good to go. So once you're good and happy with where you have your design set and your settings, just hit start. And we're just going to test this to make sure it works. So it's going to estimate our processing time, which is about six minutes, which seems about right for doing a big fill and grave like this. So I'm going to send this to my machine and then I'm going to press the button over on the machine to get it started. And I'll let you guys watch that as well. Now I've moved you a little bit so you can see that bottom corner. I'm going to go ahead and press the button on the side of the machine to get it going. And then we'll go ahead and watch it. And I'm sorry, you're going to shake a little bit.
Now that it's done, we can go ahead and take our design out. So I'm just going to grab one of the circles, and I have one of the old circles as well, and that way we can compare them. So I'm just going to grab one of them. I don't care. I'm not going to bother with taking out the wood or anything right this second. But this is the circle that we currently made. Let me see if I can get this to focus for you. So it looks pretty good, pretty even. And then this was the one that didn't work before we calibrated. So big difference. This one is much better, much closer to where we need it to be. I would say that it is like 99.9% .9 perfect. The circle doesn't line up perfectly in the software anyway, so I think it looks really, really good. So that is all you need to do to calibrate your software. Pretty easy, pretty quick process, and then just make sure you check it when you're done, which is like a simple project, just so you can make sure that it looks good, it's working well, and it is calibrated. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I am always happy to answer those for you. Be sure you're subscribed here on YouTube, that way you don't miss out on any of the crafty content we have coming. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and as always, happy crafting.